3.42 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Let's remember, what is a negative power? A negative power means you divide by that exponent. It means you turn it into 1 over 10 to the negative 2. 1 over 10 to the positive 2. And then 1 over 10 to the 2, well, 10 times 10 is 100. So we basically have 3.42 times 1 won't change it. We have 3.42 divided by 100. Now, when you're dividing by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or a million, something like that, that's just 1 with a bunch of zeros, all you have to do is move your decimals. If you're dividing by something with two zeros, you just move that decimal two times to the left. You get decimal 0, 3, 4, 2. If your decimal moves over an empty spot, it gets a 0. And that's your answer, 0 0.0342. Four-fifths divided by one-third. Anytime you are dividing fractions, what you have to do is flip the second one over and multiply. Dividing by one-third is the same as multiplying by three over one. And multiplying fractions is easy. You don't need a common denominator or anything. You just multiply straight across. Four times three is 12. On bottom, five times one is five. And then that's our answer as an improper fraction. If they want a mixed number, we're going to have to actually divide that and see what it gives us. So 12 divided by 5. 5 goes into 12 two times. 2 times 5 is 10. 12 minus 10 is 2. And we have 2 remainder of 2. That means this equals 2 from that 2 right there. That remainder of 2 gives you the new numerator. And you still have that old 5 right there. Final answer is 2 and 2 fifths. Here we have another percentage problem, and for any of these percentage word problems, you want to change it word by word into a math equation. What or what number is going to be the x you're looking for? The word is means equals. 110 is 110. Percent means divide by 100. Of means multiply and 20 is 20. And then we just have to work all of this math out. X is already by itself, so we just need to do a lot of simplifying here. 110 divided by 100. Remember, anytime you're dividing by 100, you just need to move a decimal twice. So 110 decimals at the end, if they didn't give us one, move it twice, we get 1.10. Now we have 1.10 times 20. To do that, we need to multiply. 1.10 times 20. Multiplying decimals, you start by multiplying like usual. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. We add those rows. And then the trick to multiplying with decimals is you have to count how many decimals did we start with. We started with two decimal places in the things we multiplied together. So we need two decimal places at the end. X is 22.00, or just 22. And that is our answer. So for this word problem, we have one entire box of books. We're taking away the part that's accounting books, which is one-third. We're also taking away the part that is economics books, which is one-half. And we want to see what's left over to be the finance books. Well, anytime we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. Quickest way to find that, we've got over 3 and over 2. We'll just multiply those. 3 times 2 gives you 6. You need to make everybody something over 6. So if you just have 1, it's like 1 over 1, and that'll become 6 over 6. Still one entire complete box. 1 third into something over 6. Well, 3 times what gives you 6? 3 times 2. And then 1 times 2 is 2. How do you get from halves to sixth? You multiply by 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3. The minuses stay there. 
and then we'll start actually working that out. 6 over 6 minus 2 over 6. Already have a common denominator, so 6 minus 2 is 4. The rest of the problem stays the same. And then 4, 6 minus 3, 6. They both agree on being over 6. And on top, 4 minus 3 is 1. You have 1 sixth of the, of the box of books left over. And that's how many of the books are finance books. One of the rules of triangles is that their angles always add up to be 180 degrees. For every triangle, the first angle plus the second angle plus the third angle equals 180 degrees. So if one of our angles is 45 and the other one is 65, this is our equation to find the third angle. So let's start by simplifying. 45 plus 65 ends up being 110. And we need to get the third angle, that C, by itself to do that. You need to get rid of the 110. To get rid of a positive 110, you do the opposite of it. You subtract it. Those cancel. And subtracting this gives you 70. The third angle is 70 degrees. Two and one fourth minus one half. We're adding or subtracting fractions, so the very first step is going to be to find a common denominator. And my really fast, easy way of doing that is just to multiply the numbers together. Four times two is eight. Now, if you know a lot of math, you can actually make this a little bit faster by finding the LCD, which ends up being four. That's the lowest possible common denominator. But if you're having trouble with fractions, just multiply them to get the a common denominator. As long as they're the same denominator, it doesn't matter if it's big or small, you'll still get the right answer eventually. So, I'm going to use 8 as my common denominator. How do you get from fourths to eighths? Well, to get from 4 to 8, you have to multiply by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. This 2 stays there. How do you get from halves to eighths? You have to multiply by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Next step, you need to change this from a mixed number into an improper fraction. The way to do that is to multiply the number in front times the denominator and then add the numerator to it. So 2 times 8 is 16, plus that 2 that was on top is 18. This is 18 eighths, and this is 4 eighths. And now they both agree on being over eighths, they have a common denominator. So we just subtract the numerators, the tops. 18 minus 4 is 14. So we have 14 eighths. Next, we need to turn it back into a mixed number. So we take the 14 and we divide by 8. How many times does 8 go into 14? One whole time. 2 would be 16, would be too many. 14 minus 8 is 6. I have a remainder of 6. So this is a big one in front. And then 6 remains in the fraction over that denominator 8. And then one more step. We've got 6 over 8. Turns out that that can be reduced because 6 and 8, they're both even numbers. They both divide by 2. You've got to reduce your fractions at the end. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that's our final answer. That will not reduce anymore. There's nothing else that 3 and 4 both divide by except by 1, and that won't make it any simpler. So we are done with 1 and 3 fourths. So in this problem, we want the total price, and they gave us the price per square foot. So the first thing to do is find how many square feet do we have. What's the area of this? An area for any kind of rectangle is going to be length times width. And they said we had a length of 12 and a width of 6. So 12 times 6. That'll be 72. And then once we have how many square feet we have, we just multiply that by the price per square foot. So we need 72 times 150. And then it's just a matter of multiplying. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 7 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10, so put a 0 down and carry the 1. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. 
1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 7 is 7. And we add all those up. And then at the start, we had two decimals. So at the end, we need two decimals. Our answer is $108 and zero cents.